Today, we'll be using power tools on the two Warlord Titans to prepare them both for the upcoming massive resin pours. Let's do this. It's been over a year since I traded the first Tiny Knight Goblin and began our biggest journey to date that eventually brought us to two Warlord Titans. If you've been following along on this journey, you know that our grand plan was to build this massive diorama, paint up the two Warlord Titans, and then finally auction it off for charity. And right now, we can smell blood. Every single step of this diorama takes so freaking long because they're huge! And we do want every single part to look 10 out of 10. Yes. And right now it might look like we are getting really close to doing the resin pour, and in some ways we are, but it's probably like a week's more work. There's some cool stuff to do today. At least one thing. One thing I've been terrified about starting off, and it's fucking up everything we've already done. Yeah, cause you guys have been commenting for months upon months that you want battle damage. Which means that we now have to cut into the stuff that we've spent probably hundreds of hours painting already. And it's a bit daunting. But there's more to do. You know we have a spare head, right? Oh yeah, right. As you guys know, we made a brand new Chaos Titan head alongside Meskai. This now meant that we have a spare Warlord Titan head just lying around. And ever since, we've been thinking of using this spare head as a ripped off head from another Warlord Titan. We're just gonna have to make the head look ripped, torn and squished. It's ready for paint! One of the most important things about this diorama is its journey and how we started from a night goblin and traded our way all the way up to these two massive titans. And one of the most requested things is that we hide a goblin somewhere in there and we could not agree more. It would just make the whole project go full circle. So I've got another one of those identical night goblins. It's gonna be painted up. We want to place it somewhere where it doesn't take too much focus and feels more like a hidden gem. So we found this tiny little opening here. Should be awesome. It's done, time to glue him in place. First of all, I need to fix all of the seaweeds and corals that's gonna be located on the bottom of the ocean. And since this is a huge part of the diorama, we're gonna need tons upon tons upon tons of seaweed. And for all of you wondering what cool 3D printed scenery we're using, of course we're using epic basing stuff. It's just so cool, you just download it and print it. Go check them out. While these parts get 3D printed and painted by Lucas, let me talk about this week's sponsor, Frozen. What? Yes, the 3D printing brand that we've been using and raving about for two and a half years finally decided to pay us to talk about their products in one of our videos. We could not be happier because in our opinion, Frozen makes the best consumer resin 3D printers on the market. We've even compared them to 3D printers that costs more than 10 times as much and have gotten even better results than what we did from the $10,000 3D printers. Their range is wide and it covers anything from the smaller home printers to the bigger ones where you can print an entire miniature army in one go. They offer them in resolutions from 4K all the way up to 8K. The new 8K Mini S that we've got is it's just fantastic. Seriously, it's the best home printer we've ever tried. And we've tried so many. Now is the time. We're going to add the link in the video description. Make sure you check it out because these printers are so good. Let's see how Lucas painted up these seaweed. There are so many of them. I think he painted like 50. So I am just gonna start gluing them all in place in the bottom of the lake. And once that is done, maybe we'll have to add a little bit of sand and paint to make them kind of blend together with the bottom. And hopefully that's uh, enough.
So, the moment you guys all have been waiting for and the moment I've been dreading the most finally come upon us. It's time to drill some holes in the Warlord Titans. Lucas have done a great job cutting this up. I know he was terrified of doing that. Really feels like he's been ripped by a claw in the center here. So I'm gonna paint with some metal color, gunmetal gray. Just fill in this so it feels like the metal have kind of been, you know, opened up so you can see the inside of it. I think that that would be awesome. There's a few small details left to do. One of them is to bring in some moss and algae kind of thing at the bottom of the legs. Obviously these guys have been quite well taken care of, especially this guy. But since he's out in the water sometimes for months at a time, there will be some algae collecting at the bottom of the legs. So we're gonna try to thin this down and add it to some areas first to see how it looks. Hopefully we can spread it out to make them look uh, awesome. Everyone knows it can't be enough chaos without some proper chains, so let's add some chains! I just got a package that we've been waiting on for, I don't know, three months or something. It's supposed to be part of the freehand video we did about these titans, but it got delayed in customs. We finally have it. It's one of the kindest persons in the hobby. He's a true hobby hero, Vince Venturella. We're gonna show you what awesome freehand he did and add that to the titan. Let's just do this. I think we're done with everything before the resin pour. We should be. Which means that next video in this series, resin pour. Resin pour time. Subscribe so you don't miss that. But now it is time for, for a, a grand, grand reveal. reveal. Massive thanks to all of our awesome Patreons and uh, to this week's sponsor, Frozen! 3D eyes. printer, look, yeah, another one, they're the best, 3D printers, let's go!